previously on Slayer Ruins. So I've talked about Cartoon Network miniseries for the past two videos, so I might as well talk about their newest miniseries, Long Live the Royals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could be talking about Samurai Jack since that was recently announced, but no. No. I I've set myself up for this. How could you do this to me? Why? You, you, you sensual man, you! I, I, I mean, why did you have to cockblock me from reviewing Samurai Jack? I, I, I've been waiting over a decade for this and now you're preventing me from talking about it? If only I could go back to the past to prevent the evil that is. Myself. Oh well, back to miniseries. Long Live the Royals was created by Sean Zells, a writer for a regular show in Flapjack, who also helped write the recently released regular show movie. Long Live the Royals initially premiered as a pilot back in 2014, and I never watched it. So, yeah. I had absolutely no expectations going into this. So were my expectations, Matt? <coughs> the story follows a family of Danish royalty and their wacky antics. There's the goofy dad archetype, the stern mother archetype, the loser teen boy archetype, the disobedient daughter archetype, and Bran from Game of Thrones. But incredibly annoying! Speaking of the girl, she reminds me a lot of Wendy's from Gravity Falls, but only if her design fused with Robbie's. The series consists of four episodes in the pilot, with each having their own separate plots with little bits of consistency between them to show there's a consistent plot. Imagine the episode about the schoolhouse from Over the Garden Wall and then making the episode structure the structure for your entire series. Now is the series good? I really like the third episode. It has the best pacing and writing out of all the episodes and kept me consistently entertained and laughing. Not something I can say about all the other episodes. None of the episodes feel wholly original in their ideas, which is fine because not everything has to be completely original, it just has to be executed well, which, to give the show credit, it kinda does. The show never feels bad, at its worst it's just okay, but for a series with only 5 episodes, that isn't really the best thing you could say. Literally, I feel that every episode save the third one is just okay. The first episode outside the pilot has incredibly weird pacing, it feels like it's going a bit too fast. The best way to describe it is regular show, but hyped up on weed. It, it's just a little marijuana. I also feel like the pacing doesn't really work towards the advantage of the show in this episode. It ends up making the jokes feel very hit or miss, more so than my own jokes. Most of the outside characters, as well as the daughter and the parents, are pretty likable. Alex is nearly unbearable, and Peter is more bland and boring than bland flakes. Oh no. Dr. Connor's class. It's also weird trying to pin a time period on it all. In the first episode, they make a joke about movies and one of the characters is like, WHAT'S A MOVIE?! Which makes sense until the next episode where we see characters using laptops and smartphones. I like the style of music the show goes for. It's really apparent that Cells worked on regular show, especially in the opening song for the series. I think though the series could have been even better had they upped the ante and made a metal soundtrack. Sorry this one was so short, but with files coming up in a Christmas special, I had to make sure this one wasn't too long. What are you gonna do? Exactly. It's summertime, and you know what that means. Gonna head out to the beach, gonna do some beachy things. It's summertime, feels just right. Gonna gather all my friends, and we'll party through the night. Summertime, love it. It's a loving in the summertime. It's summertime. It's summertime.